What's going on everybody, Culture Dog, Sam Hatch, back here with another Blu-ray Spotlight review, and this time we've got some more stuff from Arrow Video. They've been sending me a ton of stuff lately, and uh, one of the things you might have seen in my Halloween horror movie listing, it was a 1986 horror comedy entitled Vamp. As I mentioned in my Halloween Horror Challenge video, Vamp is one of those films that I feel like I've seen more times than I actually have. Uh, there was a lot of horror comedy vampire classics and near classics in the 80s, but you know between Fright Night and Once Bitten and especially The Lost Boys, um, this one I actually hadn't seen that many times, so it was a trip watching it again on Blu-ray. Uh, it is the tale of two kids trying to pledge a frat. Chris Makepeace is one, and I was always a fan of his, especially in uh, My Bodyguard. A huge fan of My Bodyguard when I was a kid. And uh, Robert Russler is the other one, and you've seen him in Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, among many other things. They have a really, really good kind of goofy 80s chemistry where they're always finishing one another's sentences, etc. And uh, so it's a very stylish bit where there's this you know, horror movie like Satanic Initiation that's going on, and then come to find out it's just some goofy frat hijinks. And much like in Night of the Creeps, the frat guys are really keen on handing out assignments to potential pledges. And this assignment is to get a girl, you know, a, a stripper or a prostitute and bring her back to the college. And they realize that they don't have uh, any transportation to go to the big city to get the stuff. Uh, and the big city being Los Angeles in this case. So they schmooze and uh, kind of work their way into the good graces of Getty Watanabe's character. He plays this, you know, not as stereotypic as Long Duck Dong, but he is like stereotypical in the sense that he's this, uh, you know, rich kind of successful Asian student, but he just doesn't have any friends. So these guys are going to be his friends if he lets them use his car to go into the city. And um, so, yeah, but he actually gets to speak in his actual speaking accent and not a long duck dong accent which was refreshing um so they all cruise out to the city and spin out randomly which leads them down this path to this very titty twister-esque club and this movie is um you know the from dust till dawn before there was from dust till dawn it, and uh, much like from dust till dawn it jettisons uh the story that it sets out to tell you which you think this is going to be this tale of like college shenanigans etc kicks that right out the door pretty much uh once these kids encounter you know the local nightlife particularly an early encounter at a restaurant with billy drago who plays this albino creature that rolls into town and he's got this posse with him that are pretty uh, intimidating but yeah so it's these you know smarmy you know fast talking kids and they eventually get led into this strip club where the star of the show is this woman, Katrina, played by Grace Jones. And she took the role into a definitely uh, interesting path. And she plays this character as more of this ancient, like Egyptian vampire. Not too far off from Catherine Deneuve and The Hunger, but a little uh, wilder and more artsy in this case. And, of course, Grace Jones had to have her whole posse with her to come, uh, come up with the character and the design. So Keith Haring actually painted this bizarre throne of hers and then painted her uh, in opposite tones uh, with the same kind of textures, etc. And she's got all these bizarre costumes, like, you know, wires and coils and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, come to find out she may have some you know, vampiric essence to her. And Robert Ressler finds that out quickly as he's auditioning girls to bring back to the campus with him. And then meanwhile, Dee Dee Pfeiffer shows up as this cocktail waitress that seems to know Chris Makepeace's character and, and, and is upset that he doesn't remember her. So there's that aspect, this kind of like meet cute romance going on at the same time um, as these guys trying to find their friend and what's going on. It is low budget and it's got a, that feeling like after a while where you're like, ah, are we going to go anywhere other than this one room? And then eventually you do. You get to run around town. There's a hotel and High Pike from Blade Runner shows up in a role as uh, the guy running the hotel. And Chris Makepeace has a few, you know, encounters with uh, an elevator that nearly decapitates him, etc. So there is some fun of the adventure going on. 
Um, the look of the film is insane and definitely inspired by the director of photography who decided to make this very striking color palette outside of this magenta and green. Uh, and then when I was watching the originally, I'm like at the nighttime scenes, I'm thinking, wow, all right, that's, pr that's pretty interesting. Wow. This is really going for this magenta and green. But then after a while, I'm like, all right, I'm done with the magenta and green. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was really clever how he did it, how he lit it. Like one entire wall of the building will be green. And another building in the distance will be magenta, etc. But by the time it gets to the sewers underneath the city, um, it starts to look cheap. Uh, the, the sewers are like immaculate looking, so they, they look like a set. And then the fact that they're lit green and magenta again is also very bizarre. So um, there are some naturally lit moments within the film itself too. So those are uh, those are nice when they appear. But um, yeah, the color palette of it eventually, it, it went down that path of, oh, this is kind of striking and unique and visually interesting. A lot of Dutch angles and stuff like that. Uh, so it was trying to be very visually, uh, um, you know, aggressive. But then, then it started to turn the corner. We're like, all right, I know this is like a one-trick pony. And then, then yeah, it just kind of went too far down that path. But eh, what are you gonna do? Richard Wink, the director, yeah, you know, did a good job at, at pulling together a decent vampire comedy. I, I, unfortunately, unlike From Dust Till Dawn, there is that part where I'm like, I kind of wish we'd go back to the college campus. <laughs> Uh, you know, to say the stuff that happens isn't, um, you know, entertaining enough, but, and I, I love films normally with the, that one night, like that one night of crazy adventure, etc. And, uh, but I, I don't think this completely pulls it off, uh, as much as it's trying, but I don't know. It's got a lot of heart to it. Chris Makepeace is really cool. Robert Russell is really cool. Getty Watanabe's, um, fine. And his, you know, over the top performance, he's got some interesting lines like, when do you get off tonight? Can I watch? <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, so he's, he's a little creepy and sleazy. Um, and yeah, it, you know, Grace Jones doesn't really talk a lot or anything like that, but she's got her own interesting like entourage of uh, creatures of the night as well uh, that are pretty cool. And yeah, it's not really hilarious per se. And it's, so, and it's not as um, iconic as Lost Boys or anything like that, but it was, uh, or Fright Night even. But it was a uh, really fun tripping back to it, at least, and, and checking it out and seeing it in high definition. So, yeah, I mean, this is a film I had seen on cable and, and or VHS. So seeing it in high def was a, a major revelation. Uh, yeah, it looked really good. Um, yeah, it wasn't the most amazing of contrast all the time. It wasn't a lot of deep, deep, rich blacks or anything like that. Um, just kind of like middle of the road gradation, some good shadow detail etc the colors obviously were striking that whole kind of magenta green color palette um you know really pops off the screen at times and uh yeah so i mean it, it certainly looked good it looked better than i expected you know many other 1986 movies to look yeah sound is just the original mono audio nothing to write home about but you know dialogue was intelligible really clear and uh you know no problems you know, hearing what was going on. Um, and yeah, there was some good, um, music, you know, eighties music on the, on the soundtrack as well. So that was a nice little added bonus. You know, Grace Jones's, you know, first appearance is a little music video in itself. And that still comes across, even though it's only a mono. Some good special features on here. No commentary track, but there is a uh, documentary called one of those nights, the making of vamp, which is a very entertaining documentary about an hour long. And it's got Richard Venk and Dee Dee Pfeiffer, Robert Russler, and the DP, who is very upfront about how he came up with the look of the film. And of course, everybody is very, very um, open and honest about Grace Jones and, and her lack of timeliness, and but also about how, how eager she was to get involved in the whole creative genesis of this character, the look of it, the art of it. Uh, but just about how her life was so over the top that getting to the set on time and taking her job seriously wasn't really something that was possible. So everybody was, you know, reminiscing about waiting for her for sometimes up to nine hours uh, when she was just a no-show. So that, that's kind of interesting. Um, but the the cast and crew all seemed like they got along really well. Um, and everybody is having a fun time reminiscing about 
the making of the film. But Chris McPeace in particular was, was cool seeing him because he's gone to do more things behind the camera. And he even says up front that he doesn't really do interviews and talk about his films that he acted in anymore. But he feels obliged to get involved in things like the, an earlier DVD release and this Blu-ray release because he sees the movie as, as a child of his. And, you know, for better or worse, he's going to be attached to it for forever. So I thought it was cool that he, you know, manned up essentially and came to the table and, and took part of this documentary and Getty Watanabe also was in there as well. So it was cool that they got, you know, most of the cast, obviously Grace Jones wasn't involved in the documentary, but, uh, it, it gave a really insightful, comprehensive look at the, the making of the film, you know, and including some little gag bits too. Like there's one bit where they're walking down the street and there's like a blood bank, uh, nearby. And then you learn that that was just a happy accident. You know, that, that was in Los Angeles. And it was interesting how they were able to take over Los Angeles and uh, film at night and, and, and the toll that took on everybody. Uh, then there's, you know, an image gallery, a blooper reel. The blooper reel is actually pretty fun. There's a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff on there. Um, there's behind-the-scenes rehearsals footage, a lot of stuff with Grace Jones and her, you know, first vampiric attack and, and the body language and, and movement and all that stuff, uh, mostly practicing on the director. So... That was interesting. And uh, there's also the, the thing my wife says is more entertaining than anything in the film itself. A short film, Richard Mike's a short film, Dracula Bites the Big Apple. And it's a really you know, hammy tale of Dracula taking a vacation from tiresome Transylvania to come to New York, where he's clearly going to find all these fabulous victims and uh, everything keeps falling apart for him. And he actually goes to Studio 54 at one point, too. Uh, which gets pretty bizarre. But yeah, I thought that was going to be hokier than it was. It was actually a lot more entertaining <laughs> than I anticipated. So that that was a cool addition. And uh, of course, I got a uh, just a, a test pressing, so it didn't have the, the final packaging. But there is some reversible artwork uh, featuring some newly commissioned artwork by the Twins of Evil and the original artwork as well on the reversible side. And uh, on the first pressing, there's a booklet featuring some new writing from critic Colin Gallagher. Nice disc. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen that thing in a dog's age. So it was cool jumping back in the 80s again and hanging out with the cast and, and crew of Vamp. And uh, yeah, it's not like not as good as The Lost Boys, but still a worthy watch. So thanks for hanging out, everybody. I'll be back soon with a whole bunch of other reviews and all sorts of fun stuff. So thanks for hanging out on the channel, as always, and cheers!